Good morning and welcome to Stony Point Christian Fellowship. We are so glad that you have gathered with us. We are in our sixth week of gathering this way and uh, it's time to say some thank yous. And I want to uh, publicly say how much I appreciate our worship leaders and our worship team and the job that they have done each week in leading us into worship and uh, guiding the way to uh, genuine uh, worship. Uh, we need to do a little bit of church business this morning. We are uh, announcing a new ministry. Um, it is virtual small group Bible studies. Uh, you will receive this afternoon an email uh, informing you as to how to sign up for these Bible studies. They are for uh, studies for men, for ladies, for couples, and we encourage everyone to participate in one of these groups. I have a word for you this morning that I want to share with you from the book of Psalms, chapter 122, where David says, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And I want each one of us to just say where we are, no matter where you are, at home, in your car, wherever you are, to say, I am in the house of the Lord. You have gathered in Jesus' name, and even though we have to do this in a virtual way, we are gathering in the house of the Lord together to worship him. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. What a wonderful message we heard last week. Yes, and it says that we were going to come to the house of the Lord and rejoice and worship, and we're going to do that this morning. Would you stand this morning as we worship the Lord?
just overwhelmed for what the Lord has done in my life, thinking about that in a worldly sense even, I came from nothing. And yet, here I sat with my four children and my wonderful husband, with a roof over my head and food in my stomach, being able to proclaim his praises on Easter morning. And I thank God for that. I pray that you would be reminded this morning that you are a child of God, in 1 John 3, 1, 1 John 3, 1 says, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. That no circumstance that we might find ourselves in could change that. That if we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior this morning, that we are children of God. And I pray that you would remember that this morning and this week as you go through your week and as we sing this song together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost but he brought me in his love for me. Oh his love
you don't know the Lord, he wants you to know him. He wants you to be in his house. He wants to call you his child. Amen. One of the attributes of the Lord is that he is a preserver. When we trust God, we can know that God will continue the good work he started in us. God preserves our lives for his purpose, and he preserves our salvation. For Jesus promised that no one can take you out of God's hand. No temptation, no failure, no person, not even Satan can cause God's children to lose their salvation. God preserves us so he will accomplish his purpose for us because he is our preserver.
join with you this way and we are so happy that you've invited us into your home. We are so happy to be with you this Sunday morning. As we've already said, it's been six weeks since we've begun this process of virtual church. Um, I can tell you I'm not used to it and I don't know if I'm that big of a fan. Um, I do miss seeing so many of your faces and to be able to connect with you and talk with you. Uh, I look forward to coming and recording this every week to be able to talk to the few of us that are here um, putting it together so we can worship with one another. Um, but as we've talked this week as a staff, um, one of the things, uh, one of the many things that we are missing by not being together here uh, in this building um, is the opportunity to pray with one another and to lift each other's needs up and to know uh, we don't carry that alone. And uh, this week, uh, we've had several people call who specifically needed prayer. Um, and we've had several people in the hospital from our congregation, uh, not related to the coronavirus in any way. Um, we've had people who are, have family members that are passing. We have, have people who have experienced financial difficulties with um, the financial situation, economic situation in our country. Um, and we want to go to the Lord in prayer this morning for them um, in the same way that we would if we were gathered. Um, and so I would ask if you would stand with us this morning. And uh, if you would join me um, in praying um, here at Stony Point, if you regularly attend here, we would ask you if you had a need this morning. And I would say to you that are watching this morning uh, from your homes in the comfort of your homes or in your cars as you're listening, um, we would say raise your hand. And we would gather around you and we would lay hands on you to pray in that way. And I know we can't do that, um, but I'm going to ask you this morning if you are at home and you have a prayer need that you would raise your hand. Knowing the Spirit will beat you there. And that he will uh, be invited into your home this morning. And that well, there's a church gathered all around this county and all around this nation that is praying for you. That, that their hand is on your shoulder this morning. And we want to pray that way. So if you would join me this morning as we pray with one another. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning. We thank you for your presence that is in this place and the presence that is with those watching this morning in their homes. And we know that we are one in spirit united um, by you. We just pray, God, this morning um, for the needs that would be represented amongst our church family, those that need a physical touch in their bodies, those that are in the hospital this morning, God, that you would reach down and touch them right now. We pray, God, for those that need a need in their spirit and their mind is uh, heavy and weighted, God, that you would speak this morning to their heart. For those that have relationship difficulties, God, and are having family strife and, and feeling stresses at this moment, God, that you would reach down and that your spirit would bring clarity and peace and direction to their heart and mind. We pray, God, those that are facing financial realities of, as our uh, time being cut off from work and uh, the realities of work not coming, pray, God, that you would just provide for them. You say your word, you are our provider, and we believe that you are a physical provider, that you are our emotional provider, that you are a spiritual provider, and that you have the ability to meet our needs this morning. And we just pray, God, for our church family, that you would do that for them in a special way. In your name we pray. Amen. 
The next thing I'm going to ask you to do, if you raised your hand this morning and if you have a need, that you would reach out to our prayer line. We have an email that you can reach to. And we have people that will go to the Lord specifically by name for you this morning. And we don't want you to miss that. It is the privilege of, part of being a part of the family of God that you don't have to carry that weight alone. As I prepared this week and as I thought about what I would share uh, God has uh, prompted my heart in several ways, and, and as I was reading my devotion, I thought, oh, maybe that's why you're taking me, God, and maybe you're going this way as I watched a movie with my kids, and that's how God does it with me. I don't know how he speaks to you. He doesn't ever write it on the wall uh, or audibly speak. That would be really cool, and man, I would definitely sell that on YouTube, and that's maybe why he doesn't do it, um, but uh, that uh, he speaks to my heart through strangest everyday things, and uh, Every time I've uh, studied this week, he's drawn me back here to Psalms 23. And if you want to open your Bibles, you can do that this morning. I think there's something amazing about the Psalms. And we're constantly drawn back as I've read emails and as I have looked uh, at things that people are talking about. And as I've talked to individuals, it's amazing how the Psalms speaks to us during this difficult time. Um, and it is not because there's something magical. It's not like essential oils or things like that. I'm um, sorry for all of you essential oil people this morning. Got myself in big trouble and I can't shake your hand after church to say it's okay. Um, still love you. But uh, it's nothing like that. Um, it is because it is truth that it speaks perfectly to where we are. Um, and it touches us immediately where we are at. And so in the same way it spoke to generations past, it speaks to us today because the truth of God's word is eternal in that way. And it is why some of you, maybe for the very first time to this morning, are tuning in and saying, I need something more to my life. And everything that I was hoping was going to fill, the finances that were going to fill my life, the people that were going to fill my life, the health in my body that was going to fill my life, the security I felt, all those things, those are missing from your life right now. And you say you need something more. And that is the truth of God's word that speaks perfectly to us. And it is why it is the thing that lasts, no matter what culture you're in, no matter what time you live in. It is the thing that always lasts and that we always come back to because it is eternal in that way. And so the Psalms speak to us and comfort us in the time of struggle because it is spoken to generations before in the same way. And we don't face anything this morning that has not been faced by a generation previously. No matter what struggle you prayed for just moments ago, no matter what difficulty you face in your own personal life, no matter what our nation faces or what our world faces, the Word of God has something to say to us about that. And Psalms 23 perfectly speaks uh, to us this morning. And it's one that probably many of you are knowing. Maybe if you've got kids sitting around you today, they're already beginning to quote it. I know at my house that will be what's happening. They will begin to quote the 23rd Psalm because it is well known to us. Um, so it's nothing new, but I believe it speaks to us maybe in a new way this morning as our needs are great today. Uh, and as it's spoken to me this week. So if you want to turn with me to Psalms 23, starting in verse 1, it says this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, you, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. I love that thought. That God reaches down and anoints each and every one of us. It's what Rosie was singing and talking about this morning. That he has called us. He has chosen us. He has a spot for you and me in eternity. Uh, is that anointing. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Some of you might be worrying that we're going to get through the whole 23rd Psalm. No worries. Um, I do not have the hour. I was told I can't be that long. Um, and so this morning we're going to move very quickly and we'll save some of it for next week. But the thing I want to start this uh, week about is I've heard all kinds of people. Uh, I was amazed last week as Easter Sunday was coming uh, to hear our nation tune into Easter in a way that I have not heard them tune in before. Uh, every program had some a priest or pastor on talking about the hope of Easter and how we needed that. 
Every uh, newspaper I turned to had a little article talking about how Easter was special this year and there seemed to be a need. Even here at our local newspaper, I opened up and there was a cartoon talking about the tragedies of our world, about how there's pandemic and how there's illness and there's financial strife and there's warring within nations. And then at the very end showed the empty tomb and had hope written across it. We all are searching for something, and often we'll read the scripture, and I hear people quote all the time the scriptures, even this beautiful psalm. I can't tell you the number of funerals I've been to, or baby dedications I've been to, or births that I've been to, and somebody has read this almost as a poem that you would read uh, to, uh, to a child as a comfort to them. And they hold on to this, but it, it's always just kind of like, oh, I, and I got some peace for a moment. Because they've missed what the psalm is really saying. At the very start of Psalm 23, we have this introduction. The Lord is my shepherd. It is an introduction to a relationship with the living God. And that everything else that we talk about here, everything that seems so soothing to us, does not apply to you unless you have that relationship. In my own personal life, I have several titles I carry. I like them. Roz and I have talked. We uh, have had a little bit of a a slower week as uh, we've had Easter break at our house. We were traditional in that way, and our kids didn't have school. And so we were able to have a moment to kind of uh, catch our breath and think about things. And uh, as we were talking about it, we were saying, we miss our life. We love the things we do. We love the roles we play. Uh, We love the relationships we have with people. Uh, We didn't want to break from that. We really love what we do. Um, And so uh, I I love the titles that I carry. I'm a principal at our school. I love that relationship when I have kids with kids. And when they tell me, Pastor Trevor, I need you to help me with this. I love the relationship that that means. And the way that they say my name, it depends if they're in trouble or not, um, tells the relationship that we have. I love being a pastor at this church. I love the relationship that it speaks to. And, and I, I miss that at the moment, that interaction that we have. It's a, it's a relational thing. I love being called dad. Um, it's one of my favorite things uh, to be in the world. My kids will tell you, uh, that we, we are teasing in our house, uh, that uh, they're going to have great memories from this because we've done all the fun things. Uh, during this time of quarantining. Uh, and so I love that relationship. Uh, I, I, my, my nieces and nephews, they call me the funkle. I am the fun uncle. It helps that I am only one of two uh, but, uh, in their lives. But uh, I love that title, and I, I cherish those relational titles. My favorite title is Babe, uh, which is what my wife calls me. Um, and she says it when she's really pleased and wants me to do something that will show her love. So, Babe, will you get that down off that shelf for me? Oh, Babe, will you run to the store? And it speaks to our relationship. It's like my favorite thing to hear when she says Babe, even though it usually comes with work. Because it's about our relationship. And that's what this is here. When we talk about Jesus as our shepherd... It is a relational understanding. You are the leader of my life. You are the director of my life. You have the right to tell me where to go and where not to go. And it is all this relationship that we have with him. Jesus is this relational person in our life. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're tuning in this morning and you're going, man, he's really passionate and he cries a little bit and his voice gets weird and cracky. Uh, Yeah. That's because it's about this personal relationship. And we want to say to you, man, you need a personal relationship with Jesus. And this thing that we're promising, this peace and this hope and this joy and this contentment only comes from having a personal relationship with Jesus. It's not good enough to know about him. It's not good enough to tune into a service this morning. It's not good enough to do good works. You will not experience the hope and peace until you come to know him as your personal shepherd. And that is the thing that each and every one of us deeply needs. It is the hole that all of us are experiencing. It is the fear that we have. Ultimately, this pandemic that we have is not a fear of a pandemic. It's not the virus that scares us. It is what happens at the end of this life that scares us. And knowing Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, your shepherd will take care of that. 
Each and every one of us need that personal relationship with him. And it is the thing that he is calling us to. And it is the thing that I hope, I hope the testimony of our nation during this time is that we turn to Christ, our savior, our shepherd, because we had need of him. Which leads us to the things that we want to get to. We want to get past the relationship, and we always want to stumble past it, and we want to find a way around. I'm always amazed as I talk to people who want to somehow have the blessings of Christ in their life, but don't want the relationship. A lot of the problems that we have in our world come from the fact that people want the relational goodies without the relationship. I want to have what you can give me, but I don't want to have the responsibility to you. I don't want to have the, the, the responsibility to show up and be consistent in your life. That is what the shepherd is. I show up and so there's expectations of you. At our house, there's expectations of our children. We have a relationship. And so at our house, if you're going to eat here every night and you're going to eat good, uh, if you're going to be here, you're going to have some responsibilities. That's the expectation, right? You get all of this blessing because we have this relationship going on. And that's what Jesus is inviting us into. A relationship personally with him that then comes with everything else he's promised us. And so this morning, if you want peace, if you want joy, if you need a touch this morning, all those things we sang about, it is attached to coming to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. He goes on to say this. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I love that concept because the reality is, um, as I have uh, been here, there's lots of things that I think I want. I can tell you, I want to go to the beach really bad. Anyone else this morning want to go to the beach really bad? Uh, This past week, uh, as I said already, it was Easter break at our house, and we had plans to be in Yosemite. Um, I did a virtual tour tour of Yosemite. It was was something, but it's not the same. (laughs) And I have this want. I want to be there. We have family in Bakersfield. We see them every Easter. I can tell you, me and my wife really wanted to be down in Bakersfield this week. And so when the scripture says to me, I shall not be in want, sometimes, and I hear people, sometimes Christian people talk this way, I shall not be in want means I get everything I want. I get all the things. Everything that I could possibly dream of, everything I could ever hope of, somehow that the Jesus is the sugar daddy that we come to, and we can just kind of say, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, give me, give me, give me, give me. Um, and that, that, look, the scripture says, I shall not be in want. And that's not exactly what's being said here. What's being said here is, I will take care of what you really genuine need. See, the promise is, not that he will give us what we want, but what we need. As I've talked to several of you over the phone or uh, occasionally in person, as I've got to see you at uh, certain places, it's always like, you're a, I don't know about you, but I was, I'm at the grocery store. I'm like, who do I know behind that mask? As I push my car, oh, do I know you? I think I know you. Because uh, I'm a people person. I like uh, and miss uh, talking to people. Um, and, uh, you know, there's lots of things that we think we want in life. There's a difference between needs. And as I talk to people, let's just be honest. Most of us could raise our hand this morning and say, my needs have been well met during this crisis. God has been faithful to us during this crisis. There's actually some things that I needed in my life that this crisis has brought about. And if I just know myself, I would have never done them. Because I wouldn't have invested that time. I wouldn't have slowed down my life enough to have that need met. I wouldn't have taken care of that business that needed to happen. And now we're all trapped in the house together. So it has to be dealt with. And the need, if I really look at what I need, God has been faithful through this thing to provide my needs. See, there's something about crisis that helps us prioritize what's really important. It becomes very narrow we were talking uh, just a few days ago, and it's so funny. What comes to the top of the heap uh, when you're in the middle of crisis and the things that we thought we absolutely had to have, all of a sudden they very quickly fall to the bottom. No longer concerns. Not even a conversation. We were talking about some things that we were talking about six weeks ago, and they seem like a distant memory. Like, oh my goodness, that was forever ago. I don't even know. Do we need to get that now? I don't know. Maybe that's not a priority anymore. Because as we've seen what we truly need, It's been provided. The other thing is when we talk about true needs this morning, ultimately my greatest need 
is heaven. There's nothing in this earth that I need more than I need heaven. There's nothing in this earth that I need more than redemption. There's nothing I need more than forgiveness from my sins. And God has provided perfectly for that. We celebrated last week a risen Savior, a crucified Lord. And those are the things that I need more than anything. And God is taking care of those great needs. So if you sit in your house this morning and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for anything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep my cars. I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids. God has provided your greatest needs. And I believe if you will take care of those other things, because the scripture tells me, and all those things will be added unto you, he'll take care of our physical needs. I can testify this morning, many of you can testify this morning how God has provided for your physical need. But your greatest need has been provided for through Christ Jesus. He takes care of our true needs. And maybe too often we have become discontented with who God is and what he is doing in our life because of our wants, not because of our needs. He's provided our needs. I wish we were all here this morning because we could go around this room and we could testify person after person after person of how God has taken care of you. How God has taken care of you through this circumstances. How he has, how he has uh, had somebody call you or text you just at that moment and it was the thing you needed. How money came just perfectly. I'll testify for our church. You have been so faithful. And in a time uh, where things could be very, very tight, God has provided perfectly because he's provided for you. He has provided for his work here at Stony Point. And he has taken care of our needs faithfully. See, when we sign up to trust God and when we say, man, I'm going to do God's plan and I'm going to walk God's pl- uh, path for my life and I'm going to move that way. It is not this. Everything's going to go my way. Everything's going to be just perfect. It is he's going to take care of my needs. And if we're honest this morning, I think most of us would say my needs have been met. He goes on to say this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. The next thing that God provides for us uh, as we trust in him is that he gives us a much needed rest. Uh, I was uh, loving the 80 degree weather this week. Anyone else? Oh my goodness. I was like, yes, it's here. I can tell you quarantining is easier when it's nice outside. Um, and we had an opportunity to work in our backyard. And we have a salon and our kitchen opens up. If you were at our house, uh, I you know, could show you virtually. Um, but uh, the, uh, you stand in our kitchen and look out on our back lawn. And we have a pond with fish and uh, all kinds of wonderful things in it. And these rose bushes. And it feels very park-like. And uh, when I was reading it this morning uh, or this week, I was studying. And uh, as I was looking out in our backyard, there was this beautiful park scene in my mind. And I thought, man, this is peaceful. It's hard not to sit here and not be peaceful. And it says he takes us to these peaceful places and brings rest to our weary souls. If I was to divine American culture prior to this pandemic, prior to our current circumstances, let's just be honest, it would have been weary. Weary of the news. Weary of the bickering. Weary of the rat race. Weary of the scheduling. Weary of all of these things. And somehow he has sat all of us down, or maybe it's just me, and said, you need to find rest for your soul. He brings rest to us. He brings peaceful places to our life. I have been amazed over the years in the opportunities of ministry, sitting and talking with people whose life on the outside looks like it's chaotic and crazy, but in their soul they have found peace. They'd come to a place where they were resting and they could sleep well at night. Isn't that what we all want? To sleep well at night? To put our heads to the pillow and fall asleep not worried about the next day. Not overwhelmed by the struggles of this life. Not succumbing to the anxieties of our world. And that is the promise of the truth of God's word. That when I come to know him as my savior, when I am certain of my eternity, he brings me to restful places where I can quiet my soul. I can lay my head down at night and find peace for my mind. It is a thing we long for so deeply. 
I heard someone once say that we work 50 uh, weeks a year to get two weeks of peace and find rest. And let's just be honest, most of us fill that two weeks of rest with projects and rat race and how many things can we possibly fit in if you least if you're like me. I don't know how to vacation laying down. I'm like, oh, we're only gonna be in Texas once. We gotta find everything that we can possibly see here, right? Oh, I'm only gonna be here once. I gotta take care of seeing everything. And we're scheduled to the, the every last minute. How can we squeeze all the fun out? And if you're honest, most of you are the same way. I follow a lot of you on Instagram. I see how you live your life, or at least how you portray your life. We're busy. And this has forced us to find a moment of rest. To sit down at the dining room table and talk to our kids about the things that really matter in this life. To laugh about goofball things. To make jokes. My daughter, a few weeks ago, she started posting every day a joke of the day just because it tickled her. She just thought it was funny. Oh, we feel silly. She said, to this day, we've kept it from her because that's how we are. We don't want her to think anything of it. Um, and so she, uh, we all occasionally say, oh, your cousin said something or, uh, you know, somebody from church said something. Uh, but we don't let her know anything else about it. But she just wanted to laugh. It's amazing how that's come to us here. Last night I tuned in with my family to SGN, Some Good News. John Kurzawski, or however you say his last name, uh, from uh, an actor, has done a thing all about good news. And we just sat there laughing at the top of our lungs about some of the goofball things that he was putting on there. And it was just this peaceful moment of rest, a moment to relax and enjoy. How often do we go through our busy weeks and never get that moment? Now we have been experiencing more and more often. He's brought rest to our soul. And if we just give into it and be honest, man, we can find peace here in the midst of a very hard time. And just to be honest, it's how we know God's at work. When everything's going my way and everything is exactly as I think it should be, I'm not really testing the good shepherd. When I find peace in the midst of the storm, when he can calm me, in that time of difficulty, I know he's really there. And it says that's where he wants to take each and every one of us. If you sit this morning in chaos and overwhelmed by the realities of our world, he will lead you to a peaceful place. He wants to take you there. He goes on to this. He says he restores our soul or he gives us strength. I love hearing athletes and, and small children who want to be president um, and, and old people who think they're going to still make it in the pros. Um, quote this scripture all the time in Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we take it as this kind of mantra that I can overcome any mountain that comes my way. And I've literally had little kids say, see, I can be president. Jesus said so. I was like, I don't think that's what he meant. Um, but uh, we take it sometimes that way. And what it really means there in Philippians is I can find a content place, a peaceful place, because God will give me the strength to face whatever comes my way. As we sat and talked this evening, even with people as they gathered uh, to put our, or this morning as we put the service together, we looked at it and, and was talking with folks and then we said six weeks ago, who would have thought this is how we would be doing life? I read the very first email we sent out to our school families here for our church school um, to talk about what may happen and how we've prepared. Hopefully, we'll never have to do um, this two weeks of possible quarantining, only to find out here six weeks later we're still sitting here doing it. And let's just be honest, who knows how much longer, right? And we look at it and go, how do I get the strength for that? It's because his mercies, it says to this in the scripture, are new every morning. Or this, the shepherd shows up in your life every morning and gives you what you need for this day. I will be honest, there's lots of times in my own personal life, I would rather give me an abundance. Give me more than I need, God. Don't give me just what I need. I, I, I need the whole week's worth today so I can plan out what you're going to ask me to do and how we're going to need to move, right? Or I need a month, God. But if there's something that he knows about us that we would waste that and that would become frivolous or we would look at ourselves and go, look how wonderful I am. I'm so powerful. Unless you all think I'm a holy, arrogant person, let's just be honest, several of you are too. He gives us what we need for today. He shows up 
every morning. And if we're honest, that's probably a better way of it happening. We are reminded every morning of our need for him. And we are reminded every evening how he provided to get us through this day. And that has been the testimony all of us have had in this situation. He's shown up just when we needed him to. He's provided just when we needed him to. I didn't know where it was coming from, but he restored me. I know I'm classic for this. My wife will tell you. Uh, I can go to bed at night feeling overwhelmed but wake up in the morning restored for the day. And that is God's grace and mercy. Restoring us and giving us the strength. This morning, if you feel weak and worn out and tired, he wants to restore your strength. He has something for you to do in this world. He has a plan and purpose for your life, a a calling upon your life that only will be achieved. And in this moment, he wants to restore your soul. He wants to give you the strength for the task that he's called you to. And it is part of the everyday walking with our shepherd that he provides the strength that we need for today. And I end with this this morning. It says, he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Or he leads me to what is right. I'm a planner. Uh, many of you know, if you know Roz and I, we like, like we talk about retirement already, how we're going to afford that. Um, we talk about what it's going to be like to have grandbabies, and we look forward to that uh, as uh, we have uh, teenagers now. Um, and we, we like planning out in the future. That, that's the way we like to live life. Um, Is that kind of what it is? So I like a nice straight path that shows me perfectly where I'm headed. I'll I'll just be honest. The control freak in me has struggled with this whole thing that we've gotten on. I can't control where a virus goes. I can't control what our local government says we can and can't do. And every week we have to change the way that we are creatively trying to minister um, and connect um, with people in our congregation. It's turned our whole world upside down. I don't like it. I'll just go on record. I am not made for that kind of chaos. Uh, I am made for this is in its place and we are going to do this for the next 20 years. Thank you, Jesus. That is how I am personality. Some of you, you love the roller coaster. You're like, yes, it's so great. I talked to one of our young adults here in the church recently, and they're like, I did it, I did this, and this. I'm like, oh my goodness, I wanted to just vomit for you. Um, your life is like up and down, up and down, up and down. I like, so and said he's my thing. And so this idea of he leads us to straight paths, I like that idea, but it's often only the next step that he reveals to us. And so us control freaks have to begin to trust God that he's going to lead me to what is right. I was talking to one of our young couples uh, this morning, and they were talking about how they've got some stuff going on in their life. And, and I said to them, well, as long as we pray this and, and you walk forward and knowing that Jesus is in your life, one way or another, we'll pray that he will open the right door for you and close the door that does not need to be walked through. That is the kind of work he will do in our life. He will make evident what is right. Let's just be honest, as a culture, we struggle immensely with what is right. We debate it as if it's up for grabs all the time. And it says when we know Jesus is our personal Lord and Savior, when we walk in relationship with him, he will lead us to what is right. We don't have to walk around going, oh, I don't know, I don't know, in the dark. We can take a step forward believing that the stone will be placed in for us that leads us to the right path. I don't know about you, but in the midst of this, that makes me very, very grateful It's not based on my wisdom or how much I know or how many stinking articles I can read about how to make a mask and wash my hands enough. Right? The right path is made clear by the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. And he is leading and guiding me all along the way to ultimately make me into the human being that he intends to make me into. And to have his work achieved in my life and the life of others through him. That's an amazing truth. That's, I, you should get up this morning and say, hey, man, I don't know. I can't hear you this morning. I wish I could. It's one of those things that I missed. Those many things I missed this morning. I can't hear you say amen. Because if you didn't, I would be saying it to you. Amen. What a blessing it is that we as believers can walk in confidence knowing what is right. That we don't have to stumble around in the dark guessing what the next step is. See, so often we get confused, don't think we know what the right thing is because we are like, oh, I have to know what I'm going to do 20 years from now and I'm making that choice now. And if I don't make the right choice now, then I'm going to totally mess it up for 20 years from now. That is the amazing redemptive work of Jesus. We can sidestep and he can bring us back to what's right. 
You may sit here this morning and say, I made a mess in my life. I, you don't even know how bad I messed up. Man, God can't possibly work in my life that way. That is so not true. You come to a right relationship and you say, I'm going to trust Jesus as my leader and my guide. Moving forward, he will lead you to what is right and he will restore what has been broken. We can have this confidence. We don't have to walk around scared. We do not have to be overcome with fear because he will lead us to what is right. I hope this morning you sense his presence moving already in your heart, beginning to lead you to what it is that is right, that he's restoring you through the work of his Holy Spirit this morning in your home with you right now. As he works in your heart, as you submit your heart and mind to the good shepherd. I hope you will join us back next Sunday as we continue to look into what it means to walk with the shepherd in our life. And I pray that he will lead you this week in that way. Will you bow your heads as we close? <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence this morning with us. We thank you for the way that you work and the way that you can take uh, the truth of your word and you can translate it from generation to generation to speak directly to us. And I pray this morning, God, that as we have looked and examined your word, that you would come right now and that you would restore us, that you would lead us to peaceful places, God, that you would help us to become content with what you have provided. And God, you would lead us to what is right. I pray in this time where we are so separated and we don't necessarily get the community feel that we normally have, I pray, God, that you would reunite us through the power of your spirit today and that we would be a body of believers coming together and pushing towards the goal of knowing you deeply, to knowing you personally, to knowing you corporately, working in this community in a way that has never been seen before, God, as each and every one of us individually put our trust in you. I pray, God, for those needs once again. And I pray, God, that we would be able to gather here once more soon together to be with one another, to lift our needs up, to encourage one another, to love on one another, and to experience what it means to be the church. I pray, God, that as we leave this morning, that you would be with us and that you would continue to lead and guide us. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We love you all.